Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're going to talk about acrylic color matching. Last time we talked about all the different ways you can shift a hue. And this time we're going to take all of that knowledge and use it to match colors here in my sketchbook. And I'm working in my sketchbook today because I want you to be able to see close up exactly what I'm doing when I'm mixing these colors. My colors for today are Titanium White and Mars Black, and I also have Primary Cyan, Magenta, and Yellow. These five tubes I'm going to use to mix these three samples of house paint. So I'm going to try and match these because I don't know what's in them. Um, and I just picked these up at the painting section at the store. Now I want to talk about an artist palette, which is confusing because in painting there's two different palettes. The physical object where I mix my colors, but it also refers to the library of colors that I have as an artist. Some artists have small palettes like five tubes of paint, which is what I started with in Malmakes, and some have every pigment imaginable. Personally, I find uh, when you're starting to start with a small palette, you want to only have a few tubes of paint to worry about, so I only have my primaries in black and white. I don't have to think about, oh, did I add burnt sienna to that? Did I add cadmium or cobalt? You don't have to worry about all of these colors. You only have five tubes that you could have mixed together. So when you're learning to mix color, when you're starting to paint, I do suggest a smaller palette. And like I said, this is what I started Malmix with, these five tubes of paint. So I'm going to pretend that these three colors are on a painting and I need to mix up more paint to match. Maybe it's dried out or I used it all and it's very important to me for this particular painting that I have it matched perfectly. And I'm going to be starting with this orangey color. And I know these are latex house paint samples, um, they're probably just printed, but um, I should still be able to match these pretty closely with my acrylic paint. When I'm trying to match colors, I'm asking myself a bunch of questions, answering them, and then adjusting my color based on what the answer is. And when you've been doing this over and over and over again, it becomes kind of subconscious and you just start mixing your colors until you have what you want. So I'm gonna try and break that down into the questions I'm asking myself, the answers I'm giving, and how I'm adjusting the color based on that. So the very first question is, what color do I see? And when I look at this sample, I see orange, um, I see a light orange and um, it's kind of warm to me. And you may have heard people say that red, orange, and yellow are warm colors and green, blue, and violet are cool colors. And while that is true, it's also kind of based on context. Like if I compare my primary yellow, it feels very, very cool compared to this orange to me. So I'm basing this on that. This is a warmer orange. I could also have a cooler orange. This one is just warm. So the first thing I know is it's orange and I'm gonna start by mixing orange and then sampling it here in my sketchbook next to my sample. And um, when you're mixing, you don't have to sample all the things. I'm just gonna kind of show you like this was the first step. This is how it looked. And then I did this and this is how it looked. Um, normally I wouldn't sample like the first couple steps against my sample because they're going to be very different than I want. But I wanna show you guys what I'm doing step by step and how my color is evolving trying to match this light orange color. So I'm going to start by mixing an orange and testing it against my sample. Now when I'm mixing this orange, um, I can add more yellow, I can add more red, um, and I'm just trying to go with something in the middle of the road to compare it to my paint sample on my sketchbook. Now testing it against my sample, I need to ask myself what's wrong with it. Um, is it too bright? Is it too saturated? Is it too dark? What's going on with it that I can fix? And when I see this, I think it's probably too dark and I think it's probably too saturated because it's very, very intense orange. It's not as muted as my sample is. And there's no real rule about which one I'm going to do first. Personally, I think value um, is something I should change first before saturation in this case. On another sample, I may do saturation before I change value. And um, so I'm gonna change the value of this. I think it needs to be a bit lighter. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white. And you'll notice I'm only adding small amounts of paint, um, not only because I'm only working in small samples, but I wanna make sure that I haven't added too much and gone past the mark I'm trying to meet. And again, I'm gonna just test this against the sample. And you can see it's much closer. Um, I still think it is pretty dark and I still think it might be a little too saturated. So I'm going to lighten it up even more. So I'm thinking my third test right here is too light. I think I added too much white this time. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more orange to that and then see how it looks. 
Now if I need to, I can even test this orange against my original one. And I think I added too much red, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow and then mix it into my light color. So this color is now a tint because it has white in it, and I still think it's too saturated. And as you know from the intensity saturation video, there's two ways I can adjust that. I can either add gray or I can add a complement. And there's not really a rule about it, it's just sort of a feeling you start to develop the more you look at color. And you start to see gray in colors, and that's when you add gray to your color to make it more gray or you start to not see any gray and that's when you add the complement. In this case, I feel like this orange has some gray in it, so I'm gonna mix up a lighter gray because it's a lighter orange and then mix that into my new color. Now this gray, based on where it is on the value scale, is going to affect my color. If it's lighter, it's going to make my color lighter. If it's right in the middle of the value scale, it won't change the brightness of my color. It'll only affect the saturation. And I went a little bit lighter on my gray because I thought this was still a bit bright compared to these samples. I thought it should be kind of in between these. So I've mixed it in and I think I added too much gray, but let's sample it against my test sample. So my new color is actually a bit darker and it's also um, more desaturated than the paint swatch. So I'm gonna start by mixing a little bit more orange into it to see if that brightens it up a little bit. And if I need to, I can continue to add some white into it. So adding the orange definitely helped, but I still think it's a little dark. So I'm just gonna add a very, very little bit of white to it. Still too dark, so just a little more white. And this one feels pretty close. So I'm just gonna paint a little bit on top of the sample and then see how that looks. When I paint it directly on the sample, I can see that it's too dark and it's also a bit more desaturated than my sample is. So I'm gonna add a little bit more orange in it and see how that looks. Still too desaturated, so I had to mix up some more orange and trying to compare that. Normally you'd be mixing up a lot more paint if you're gonna be repainting an area and you wouldn't be running out as easily. So on my next one, I'm gonna be using um, a bit more paint to test this out, but um, I'm finding that my color is you know, too dark, not saturated enough, and I'm kind of going back and forth between all of the grays, the white, the orange, until I'm happy with it. So I'm just gonna move this over and do another swab over here. And I think that is too dark, so I'm gonna add a little bit of white into it. And it's also a bit desaturated, so a little bit more orange. And it's also a bit redder than I want, so I'll add a little yellow. This time I thought that my test sample was too red compared to my paint swatch, so I added in a little bit more yellow. Still too dark, so I added in some white. This last swatch is probably the closest, and I've been adding little bits of white um, doing these last few here, and I think I have that right finally. I just think it's a little too red, so I'm gonna add just in the smallest bit of um, yellow and make this a little bit more yellow. Now when I'm doing this, I will paint right on where I want it to be as long as I can see what I'm doing, so I can kind of compare the actual paint to my sample. And I think this one is basically perfect. Um, it's really blending in really well and I can't see it very well except for the texture on the paint swatch. Um, but it's important to know that acrylic paint will dry a different color and it's a lot more noticeable on student paint versus artist grade paint. So I'm gonna cover my paints so they don't dry out on me and then we'll let this dry and we'll talk about um, artist grade versus student grade. 
Now my glass palette doesn't absorb any of the moisture from the paint, so it's not going to dry out the paint from just the material it's made of. I like to cover my paints in plastic wrap um, just so the air doesn't dry them out because acrylic paint does dry very, very quickly. And what I use for this is actually the stuff my canvases come wrapped in. I just cut it to size or a small square and cover up whatever paint I'm using so it doesn't dry out. I can make um, acrylic paint last a couple days by doing this depending on how big it is or how carefully I press around the edges, but just for a few minutes this is going to be perfect so it doesn't dry out on me. While this is drying, let's talk about what makes acrylic paint acrylic paint and what's in every tube of paint. So there's kind of three main categories for that. The first is pigment, the second is binder, and the third one is kind of a miscellaneous and it's going to change based on what type of paint it is and what quality paint it is. So um, pigment is what makes a tube of paint the color that it is. Um, it's the chemical or organic material or whatever that makes it this primary magenta. And Golden publishes theirs on the back. So the pigment inside this tube of paint is quinacridone and it has a color code which is PV19. If I look at the cyan, it says um, phthalo blue green shade and titanium white. That's the pigments in this tube. So carbon will have carbon and titanium white will have titanium. It's going to publish that. It's a sign of a better paint if you know what pigment is in it. Um, and this is in every tube of paint, whether it's oil or house paint or watercolor. It's going to have pigment to make it the color that it is. Now the second category is a binder. And with acrylic paint, that's going to affect adhesion, how well it sticks to things. Um, so acrylic is known for kind of being very permanent because it's basically bonded to the surface of whatever it's been painted with. Um, and that's going to change based on partly the quality level of your paint, but more so the type of paint you're using. With acrylic, you're using a polymer base. So polymer is a plastic and when it dries, it is literally plastic on your canvas or paper or wood. Um, oil paint, if you had oil paint, the binder would be like a linseed oil. Watercolor would be water. Um, I'm not sure what binder is in gouache, but it's going to be different. Um, so that's what makes acrylic paint that, the acrylic polymer. And Golden has that on the back. It says produced with acrylic polymer dispersion. That's basically what's holding this together, um, what's making it this type of paint. Now the last category is miscellaneous. That's everything that's not a pigment and not a binder. And based on the type of paint you're using and the quality, it's going to be different. When you're working with artist paints, it's going to be UV resistance, um, like a preservative or things that are going to make these paints more expensive because they're trying to get you to spend more money. Um, when you're using student grade or like a kitty non-toxic paint, they're going to be filler. And the kitty paints are gonna have a ton of filler. Um, and they're not gonna react the same. So unless you are younger and you need the non-toxic or you're working with kids, I don't suggest you use like Crayola or the very, very cheap paints. I do suggest using a student grade paint. And I don't suggest starting off with golden. If you can afford it, go for it. It's a lot easier to mix than a student grade paint, but it's expensive. When I was a college student, I had to buy paint and I didn't have absolutely any money, like living on ramen college student. And I was always nervous to make my colors on my palette. I didn't want to waste anything because I would just be throwing money away. So I couldn't make mistakes. I had to make sure that I had the right amount of paint and I used up everything on my palette because I was just wasting money otherwise. Um, so I couldn't afford to make mistakes and try things and learn how colors worked and do all of that in class because I couldn't afford it. So I had to be careful and had to ration my paint and be very, very careful about how much I put out on my palette. And so I would suggest starting with a student grade paint so you can do that, so you can afford to make those mistakes and learn how your colors work. And then as you figure out how to do those things and that, you know, I want to continue painting and doing more, then start upgrading to an artist paint like Golden or Liquitex Heavy Body or something along those lines. Now, all of that is important to know because different paints are going to dry differently. They're going to shift ever so slightly when they're dry versus when they're wet. Now, artist paints shift less than student paints and student paints shift less than like kid paint. Um, kid paint's going to shift a ton. So um, when you're doing that, it's important even with artist paint to let it dry if you're trying to perfectly match something to see how it's dried differently. So if I look at this now that it's dry, it's just ever so slightly darker, like just barely darker. So if I had covered this up or if I had mixed more of it, <laughs> I 
could add in a little bit of white and then just try again and I'd probably be perfect because it's that close. So the whole time I'm doing this, I'm asking myself basically, what's wrong, how do I fix it? So on this one, what was wrong? It was too red. And because it was too red and not orange enough, I needed to add yellow because yellow makes it more orange. So I added yellow. What's wrong with it? It's too dark. To make it lighter, you add white. So I added white. Still too dark, more white. Still too dark, more white. Still too dark, more white. Now the problem, I think it's too red, so I need to add more yellow. So I added more yellow and it was basically perfect from there. So that's basically the questions I'm asking myself every time. What's wrong? How do I fix it? And then trying to fix it. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with green and then try and match this green. So again, my very first question is what do I see? Well, it's a dark green. I don't really see it skewing warm or cool. It's kind of neutral. Like it doesn't feel warm or cool in one way or the other. So I'm gonna start by making my green and I do that by mixing blue and yellow. And then I'm gonna compare it to the sample. And this time I'm gonna use a bit more paint so I don't run out on <laughs> like the last one. And just knowing how my paints work, I know I need to start with a lot of yellow just because I've done this so much that I know I need to start with more yellow because it'll give me more of a neutral green. The ratio isn't quite 50-50. And I'm trying to start by mixing um, more of a middle of the road green. So um, I'm gonna do that before I test it against the sample so I know I have a good hue to start with. So my question to myself is what's wrong with the paint I mixed? And my answer is it's too light, it's not dark enough. Now to make paints darker, there's two ways you can do that. I can add in black, or I can add in the complement, which is gonna reduce saturation, but also make it just slightly darker. And when I look at this green here, I think it looks ever so slightly desaturated. So I think what I wanna do is add just a little bit of red into my green and then paint it next to it and see how it's affected my color. And I'm just adding the tiniest bit of red because I don't want to make this too muddy. All right, we'll test this one. And you can see that's definitely darker than the last one, but it's not dark enough compared to my sample yet. And I don't wanna desaturate it too much because it will get muddy, like I said. So I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of black. So that's getting a bit darker yet, but I still think it's not dark enough. So I'm thinking this is looking a little too yellow, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue. Maybe a little bit more, because that didn't do very much. And I still think it needs to be a little bit darker, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more black. And my only real rule for myself when I'm mixing colors is to start with the lighter color and mix the darker color into it. Um, the darker colors, no matter if you're going, um, trying to mix a green with yellow and blue, the darker color is gonna always overpower the lighter color. So I'm always starting with the lighter color and mixing small amounts of the darker color in. Like if I'm trying to make light yellow, I always start with white and add small amounts of yellow until I like how it looks. I think this is really close, so I'm gonna let it dry here on the paper, cover up my paints, and then we'll see how it looks after it's dried. So it's looking like the paint is dry, and now I can compare just the little bit I've painted on this paint swatch to the paint I ended up with. And besides a texture difference, it looks basically perfect. Um, I can't see any difference between like the printer ink and the paint. Just the texture of the paint is the only thing I know that there's something there. Um, so I did really good mixing up the green, and we're gonna try again with the light blue. So looking at the blue, I'm asking myself the first question, what do I see? Well, I see a light blue, so I know I'm gonna need blue and white. Um, it's looking ever so slightly green, just a little bit, um, at least compared to like my cyan color here. So I know I'll probably need to add just a little bit of yellow to this, but otherwise I think it looks really saturated. Like I don't really see much gray to it. So I'm gonna start by um, sampling the cyan straight against this and it's probably gonna be too dark. So we'll move on from there. So like I said, obviously the cyan is too dark. So I'm gonna mix just a little bit of white into that and see how it looks. And you can see we're a lot closer and it's definitely looking more blue than the paint swatch. So I definitely think I need to add just a little bit of yellow. Now I know that yellow is going to very quickly make green. So I really only need just the smallest, tiniest little bit. I don't wanna make this green. Okay, that wasn't enough, so just a little bit more. That might be too much. 
still think it looks just a little too blue, so maybe a little bit more yellow. A little more turquoise colored instead of blue. And I think color four looks just a little bit too dark. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white. Still a little bit too dark, so just adding a little bit more white. This is the part where patience comes into play because I'm getting frustrated that it's not getting light enough fast enough, but if I add too much, then I have to basically add more blue and add more yellow. So I don't wanna push this too far, otherwise I'll have to basically start over. I still think it's too dark, so I'm gonna add more white to it. And I still think it's a little too blue, so I may add a little bit more yellow. After letting it dry, I thought it was still too blue, so I added some yellow. And then it was too dark, so I added some white. And I think I have it perfect this time. The only real difference I can see between my last color I tried and the paper itself is a brush mark, um, just like the green. But as you can see, the blue took me a lot longer than the green. And as you do this, the more often you do this, you're going to get faster, it's going to be easier, and you're going to get better at it, and you're gonna to start to combine some of these steps. For example, if I was trying to mix this color, I wouldn't have started with a straight up orange. I would have probably started with orange and light gray and just kind of combined some of those first steps together and had something really close and then just had to do the small adjustments from there. Um, so you're going to get better at it and that's why this sort of practice is very important. Um, you can get some of these little paint samples. You can pick up a couple at a time from a store and just kind of test things. You can also test colors in like magazines or print ad or um, you know other things you have laying around. Try and match the color of your table or I could try and match the color of this palette. And you can start to kind of work that way to mix your colors. So make sure you're practicing this, it's very important. Um, and another tool that will help you mixing your colors is a color mixing chart. So next time we're gonna talk about making one of those. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes. And I'll see you again here for another Mal Makes video.